And today we are gonna talk about the importance of what to do before you order your tadpoles and fish. What's going on guys? My name is Jennings with Pond Megastore and today we are going to talk about the importance of what to do before you order your tadpoles and fish. The reason we talk about this is because we would like you all to do these things before even concerning yourself with what to do with them once they arrive. Once you've done all these things, that question will answer itself. Now before they arrive, the first thing you all need to do is make sure that your pond is aged and cycled. You guys can go on to pondmegastore.com and get yourself a box of healthy bacteria, such as this, as well as a box of diatoms. Now, adding these two things to your ecosystem are going to be two of the three biggest factors that you can help yourself with when wanting to make sure that the ecosystem can sustain itself, keep itself clean, and keep it free of ammonia, which is one of the toxins that can be dangerous to your live animals. Now the third of three factors is having your plants established. What we mean by that is that the plants have been planted and have taken root for a minimum of two weeks before you introduce the live animals. This is important because this is one of the most natural ways to have your plants working for you in keeping your pond clean, healthy, and ready for these live animals to come. Third thing, be prepared. Now this might sound silly, might sound like it's common sense. However, people do not use their tracking number that is given to them after making their order as they should or as consistently as you would think they would. Making sure that you're using your tracking number to know the day and approximately the window of time that your package will be delivered is hugely crucial, especially with these live animals. We say location, location, location. This is number two, the biggest factor because you never know if the delivery person is going to put it on your front porch, your side porch, your mailbox, or in a P.O. box, which, by the way, we highly suggest not using a P.O. box as your main address for where the live animals should be delivered because you may not even get a notification that the animals have arrived in your P.O. box. Same as if you don't use a tracking number to know when they're going to arrive, you might go a number of hours or worse, days before actually finding your live animals. Now, if all these things are done, great. Very last thing, number four, the three must-haves that we want you all to have with you when your animals arrive is a small bucket to help transfer the animals, a fine net, and something to open the bag with. If you knock out all four of these checklist points, you'll be good to go and life will be so much easier when your live animals arrive. We are now talking about what happens when you have ordered your animals and they have arrived safely to hopefully your doorstep where you expected them to arrive. Number one, a disclaimer because a lot of people freak out about this, they're very concerned about this and we do not want you all to be stressed out at all. The packaging, meaning the ice pack and the container itself will arrive warm. The water in the bag with the animals will be warm. The ice pack and the coolness of the packaging is really only to keep the animals docile for the first part of the transit. Once they arrive, they've been traveling for about 24 hours, and so of course the water and the ice packs will be warm at this point. It is to be expected and not anything to concern yourself with. The next thing we want to make sure that you guys are aware of is that in the bag of animals, you're going to see that there's only about 20% water taking up the volume of the bag. The rest of the volume is taken up by 80% oxygen, so you might see it and say, wow, there's very little water in here. Should I be concerned? No. The water is really only to keep the animals wet and safe in that manner. The oxygen is what really allows them to breathe. And there's enough oxygen in each bag to make sure they have at least 24 hours of breathable, safe oxygen. So don't be concerned when you see minimal water in the bag. Step number one for both yourself and the animals, keep cool, calm, and collected. Very important that you guys keep these animals cool while you're transferring them from your front porch to the pond. Speaking of getting them to the pond, we want to get them to the pond as soon as possible, ASAP. Number two, make sure this is probably already done when you know that they've been delivered. Have your small bucket, 
your fine net and your bag opening tool at the ready, hopefully by the side of the pool when you are ready to go once they have arrived. Now three and four go hand in hand. These two are basically the same step. You're gonna to wanna to set your bucket up next to the pond, drape your fine net across the top, and you're going to make an incision with your bag opening tool in the bag just large enough to let the animals out. Now, what you really want to make sure of, the reason we have the bucket in the first place and the net draped across the top, the net is what is going to catch the animals when you're pouring them out of the bag. The bucket is going to capture all that water that they've been traveling in. It's the same way when you travel from somewhere to a vacation to somewhere for work. You just travel in those clothes. You probably don't want to live the next day or two in those same clothes. You want to shower, you want to change. These animals want fresh, clean water. You can look at this water and you can see how dirty it is. Again, this is the water they traveled in. They don't want to stay in this water and you don't want this water in the pond. It would basically be like taking one step forward and two steps back if you were just to cut open the bag and pour the entire contents, the animals and the water they traveled in straight into the pond. You're adding toxins, you're adding ammonia that you already do not want into the pond directly to the pond, again, taking one step forward, two steps back. Now, with that being said, once you have your animals safely in the net and the water has been collected into the bucket, which again, the water will not be going into the pond, you will take the net with your animals and very softly across the top of the pond, drag it backwards so that the pressure of the water moving through the fine net is going to very safely push the animal out of the net and into the pond. You want to do this very carefully, very slowly. Take your time. You are introducing them to a brand new environment, a brand new ecosystem for the first time. Now, three really big no-nos, three big do nots. We have them beautifully written here in red. Number one, do not for any reason open the bag early. A lot of times if you have kids, they're excited. They have these new animals that you're going to have in this pond that they're going to be able to have and then see every single day. Don't open it early. Just get them to the pond. Let the kids see them once they are free in their new environment. Number two, don't float the bag. This is not Finding Nemo. You don't want to see animals floating in the water they've traveled in on top of their brand new home to acclimate the water temperature inside the bag to the same temperature as their new environment. It's not necessarily, don't do it. Follow these steps as before and you'll be good to go. Number three, once you have the animals safely in the pond, do not feed them for up to five days. This is the best time to really let them be in there Find the food that's already in there because we follow those first four steps to make sure the ecosystem was ready for them. They're going to be fine. They have plenty to eat inside the pond already. And if you start to feed them too early, there'll be a very quick ammonia buildup, a very quick waste buildup. And these are just things that we do not want to concern ourselves with going back to not wanting to take one step forward and two steps back. But once you follow these and your animals are safely in the pond, you guys are good to go.